are here, maybe geographically outside Africa, but it is Africa this time because we are attending the annual meeting of the African Development Bank Group, uh, which the government of uh, South Korea uh, is so gracious to organize. Uh, so Africans are organized here to attend that important event. Uh, ADB is a premier uh, institution in Africa. So uh, we all have to be here. Uh, and uh, what a better, what a, where else can you go to talk about this? Except in an arrangement in a conference or um, a meeting uh, organized by the African Development Bank, which uh, has as one of its high fives the integration of Africa. So you have, he has the Feed Africa, Power Africa, Integrate Africa, and so on. So it all fits in. Um, and of course, you know that ADB is the uh, promoted African Export Import Bank. So that's why we are here today. Essentially, it's a no-brainer when you talk about the importance of intra-Africa trade as we try to up the numbers. But is a trade fair the solution? to trying to boost intra-Africa trade? Yes, um, certainly. You know, um, every time you ask people, uh, what is the constraint to intra-African trade? The first thing you hear is infrastructure. But we beg to differ. We agree that infrastructure is a constraint, but it's a constraint to the overall trade of Africa. Uh, so today, total trade of Africa, depending on the year and how commodity price is fair, it's about $1 trillion. What it then means is that the stock of infrastructure in Africa can carry $1 trillion of trade. The big question is, why is intra-African trade share of that between 150 and 170? Why is it not 40%? Why is it not $400 billion? That is a question. And the reason is because Africans do not have information about what is happening across borders. Uh, a country uh, imports what its neighbor exports at even cheaper price. It, that country imports at a higher cost. Um, and these uh, happened because of uh, the uh, colonial history, uh, which aligned the economic interests with the metropolitan powers. Uh, we need uh, uh, trade fairs. We need trade information to begin to break that historical stranglehold that uh, is creating all the problems. Uh, and. The trade fair we are doing is a trade fair that is unique. It is a trade fair that will be held both physically and virtually. And the virtual trade fair makes it possible for SMEs and others who are not able to attend to exhibit uh, virtually and actually conclude deals virtually. And the virtual trade fair will continue even after, after the physical fair has closed. So with that, we aim to broaden knowledge about goods produced and sold within Africa amongst Africans. So Mr. President, essentially the idea of the breakfast, uh, the, the trade fair is to ensure that information is made available within Africa so as to enable them identify more easily trade partners that they can work with. So let's now try to attempt an extrapolation of the theme of the trade fair, Transforming Africa, Spotlight on Intra-African Trade Fair 2018 for an Effective Continental Free Trade Area. Talk us through the key conversations to expect and activities to expect at the trade fair. The trade fair, of course, has, we have a number of activities. The first, it will be a trade exhibition, so people are going to come there to exhibit their goods. And as I said, also physically and virtually. 
uh, but we also create an opportunity for business to business interactions. So we are going to make arrangements for businesses to meet and close transactions. Uh, and those transactions are likely to be supported by the banks that will be there. We will also have an opportunity to do twinning. And that is why uh, we are bringing and encouraging uh, African trading partners to also exhibit, have their own pavilions. And as we speak, um, we are expecting that uh, China, Russia, Brazil, India, uh, maybe the UK uh, would exhibit. Uh, we have not yet finalized that side. So with those exhibitions, uh, we are going to create an opportunity for joint ventures between African entities and uh, the uh, entities in some of those economies to manufacture goods that will go into uh, intra-African trade. And that's talking about taking trade collaborations beyond Africa across other parts of the world. Yeah, but, f but for the purpose of intra-African trade, don't forget that one of the reasons why we are championing intra-African trade is because we want Africa to also industrialize because in traffic and trade is going to trigger the diversification in products that Africa needs uh, to trade more amongst itself. And when you go into diversification, it means you're going to start adding value to differentiate your products. So we need technology. We need people who are ahead of us in some of these aspects. And that is why we are encouraging non-Africans, especially those who are um, who deal with investment goods, who bring technology, and also those who want to go into joint ventures with African entities. Now, talking about the road to industrializing trade in Africa, how do we begin to move conversations away from focusing on traditional infrastructural issues to actually leveraging on technology to boost trade within Africa? Well, Today, everything is driven by technology. Uh, and as I said, you can see uh, what we are doing with virtual trade fair. Uh, all through, uh, technology is important. And we in Africa Bank, we've created an innovation uh, unit. And the, uh, the work that unit does is to make sure that anything we are doing is subjected to the test of uh, technology. Is there a way to use technology to do it in a cheaper way, to do it more efficiently, to make it have more impact? So that's what they do. And for us, uh, we are an innovation bank. Um, as we speak today, uh, we are working to put in place an trafficant uh, payment platform which will be technology-driven. Our trade information portal is a technology-driven portal. It's not going to just be uh, the usual way you, you vend uh, trade information.